Crook is a deck that many people brush off. You either go full dodge or full armor. Why bother with half and half? Well, it's a bit hard to deny that going full into either one is better than summon to both, but maybe I can interest you in playing this pretty unique deck. Since Crook is one of the older decks of the game, it's pretty straightforward. However, one thing that needs to be mentioned is the armor it boosts. Reading Crook's perks, you'll notice that it mentions Ballistic Vests. This is referring to only the Lightweight Ballistic Vest, Ballistic Vest, and Heavy Ballistic Vest. You might think that this is obvious, but I've seen people ask about the other armor choices for whatever reason. Got it? Alright, moving on. For those Ballistic Vests, you gain 25% more dodge and 65% more armor. However, armor has negative dodge values, which means that this 25% more dodge will only leave the HBV with 10 dodge. That's kind of pathetic, so Overkill added 15 additional default dodge. On top of that, you also get a 10% faster armor recovery rate. If you remember my x -Prez video in which I went over armor regeneration mechanics, this alone isn't really worth anything. However, when you have other buffs like Resilience Basic and Shock and Awe, then you can cut almost a second off your timer. And that's all Crook has to offer. It really isn't much, but what can we do about it? Let's just get into the builds. This is how you should play Crook for the best effect. HPV can be built for 2-shot by getting Die Hard Aced, Iron Man Basic, and Frenzy Aced. There are other ways to get 2-shot, but they aren't consistent due to reliance on Quick Fix and Underdog. Is it expensive? Yeah, but it's worth it. This is what creates the feeling of actually being able to tank and occasionally dodging. The weapons on this build are somewhat unique, at least the Raven is. Technically, the Raven is the best of its class. However, the only competitor it has is the Reinfeld 880, so not much competition there. The 95 damage shotgun class is the most awkward one. Without Zerk, you can't one-shot heavies, and the fire rate they come with is pretty terrible. However, the Raven has great concealment, which allows this build to get low blow without needing to ace both optical illusions and inner pockets. Playing Crook in this setup is expensive as is, so the Raven has value. To compensate for the lack of killing power, you can reload cancel your shots. This can be incredibly useful in some cases, and tedious in others. Honestly, practice this a bit in lower difficulties before you get the hang of it, and then apply it whenever you see fit. Reload cancelling a shotgun like this is one of the few niche skills that can be learned in this game. The Spec Ops SMG is here to deal with dozers. The Raven is bad at crowd damage, but it's even worse at single target. Overkill Ace Zerk Spec Ops should fix that. You'll also probably switch to this gun when you get tired of the Raven, since that sort of happens. One last thing worth mentioning is Buckshot over Flechette here. Usually I don't bother with Flechette on non-170 damage shotguns. However, given how weak the Raven is, Flechette helps with range. You can change it back to Buckshot if you're lazy, since you wouldn't need to zerk past the default frenzy. Speaking of zerking, you can zerk off of snipers if you so wish. They do just enough damage to break through your armor and damage you a little bit. However, if you want to be cool, bring a molotov and zerk down until you can't anymore, then get sniped or use another molotov. This brings you to exactly 100 zerk. There aren't many true 100 zerks which don't kill you in this game, and honestly it's very possible that this is the only consistent one.
The last build was focusing armor, this one focuses dodge. LVP Crook is not bad at all, especially considering how cheap it is. The boost in armor allows tanking light shots without needing diehard ace, and you get 35 dodge with that. Now one thing worth mentioning is Rogue. If you have 4 points for diehard ace, LVP Rogue has 5 more dodge than Crook. So although LVP Crook isn't bad, HPV Crook dominates because you could play LBV Rogue and just do better. But Crook does have merit here, unlike diehard aced LBV on Rogue, Crook can also take shield shots. While reviving someone by hand, the armor boost also allows you to take a heavy shot to your armor. And of course, faster armor regen. Honestly, you can switch out Rogue LBV builds and Crook LBV builds and just see what you prefer. Slightly more dodge in Rogue or the varied boosts of Crook. As for the weapons, well, there's nothing extraordinary here. The AK-5 is a really fun weapon which makes a somewhat weaker build like this super fun to play, at least for me. The 5.7 is equally fun, but it's mainly here to deal with shields. We focused armor, we focused dodge. Now let's meet in the middle. Crook is designed to strike a balance between armor and dodge, so playing the middle option should be the best, right? Yeah, not particularly. Ballistic Vest Crook is really just the worst of both worlds. You can't dodge as much as LBV, and you can't tank consistently enough like HBV. If you really want, you can make the Ballistic Vest take two heavy shots. However, it costs as much as the HBV two shot, but with a 10% resist on top. Weigh your options, guaranteed 2 shot from HPV or sometimes 2 shot BV with 5 more dodge. You'll notice that I've asked a question like this again. Crook enforces 2 shot HPV so hard that there's really no point in playing either of the two other armor options it has. Anyway, the weapons. The GL40 is the bomb, figuratively and literally. It's great at clearing crowds, and you'll be using this whenever you see more than like 4 people at once. It's not that the Deagle can't deal with crowds, it just requires aiming, and why would you want to do that? Speaking of the Deagle, the gun is pretty cool, but I have no real attachment to it. However, since I hold nothing sacred, and also have no respect for any of you, I have decided to silence the Deagle. I know my Twitch chat complained when I did this, so I look forward to seeing everyone's kind words. Anyway, the Deagle will one-shot heavies to the head if Trigger Happy is active, so you can clear enemies pretty effectively. If you keep up with spawns using just the pistol, that's fine, but I prefer the GL40. However, the Deagle is very effective against dozers of any kind, so make sure to not use the GL40 against those. Crook is the most expensive perk deck in the game, since it requires both basic and ace tier 4 skills to be useful at all, compared to other decks which require, at most, an ICTV with a 10% resist, just an ICTV, or even less than that. But it can be made even more expensive. Two-shot HPV focuses armor, but why not grab some dodge too? Sneaky Bastard is an extremely expensive skill here, especially for how much benefit it gives, so let's add that. Out of all the weapon types in the game, sniper rifles are the only ones that require an ace tier 4 skill. You could make an argument for LMGs needing ace body expertise, 
but they can get a lot of value out of basic, and even no body expertise LMGs can work fine due to bullet spam. And alright, you don't need greys for sniper rifles, you could just line up collaterals every single shot, but I think everyone will agree with me that sniper rifles benefit the most out of their tier 4 skill being aced. So now we are left with a build requiring 1 basic and 3 aced tier 4 skills, a whopping 104 points to just get the template of this build going. Well, it would be foolish to go for sneaky bastard concealment and not get low blow, since it's a very strong skill for what it gives. And that leaves us with a measly 4 points to do whatever with. I went for Stable Shot Ace to get the stability and accuracy, but you could try some other stuff out. Scavenger is a hard skill to play without, especially at the beginning, but since I have a Grey's 170 Sniper, I felt confident enough to skimp out on that skill. You could move some points around and get Pumping Iron Ace to help with Dozers. You could go for Hardware Expert and Combat Medic for better interactions. It's really up to you. The weapons in this build are worth the point cost. Probably. The Grom is basically a contractor for people who want to convince themselves that they aren't dirty enough to use the contractor. The difference in weapon power is almost insignificant, so trust me, you aren't any less dirty for using a different 170 damage sniper. However, to conceal to the same level as Grom, the contractor accuracy goes out the window, which makes the Grom reasonable in this case. The Tatanka is just a great SMG, and aside from it being in the same weapon pack as the Grom, there's no bigger plan as to why I chose it. As I explained at the beginning of the video, there's no good reason to use anything other than the three armor pieces that Crook benefits, and when you get down to it, only one of those actually has a purpose. However, because of the pity dodge that the deck gives, Suit comes with 20 dodge by default, which is better than nothing. Technically, you could do Flak Jack as well, since with Sneaky Bastard, it can get 5 entire dodge. But because it misses out on the armor boost of the Ballistic Vests, it has even less armor than the Ballistic Vest by default. But the Suit doesn't need any more armor, so it's 100% valid for playing Crook. Totally. Yeah, it's a pretty terrible idea, and I'm not really going to defend it. If you wanted pathetic dodge on suit, then just go play Burglar for its 35. The dodge will help you a tiny bit, but for the most part, this build requires you to play it rather than the build playing itself. The Akimbo Contractor pistols are neat, but nothing special to me. I like the reload animation of the single version, but the Akimbo reload is meh. Like the Deagle, having Trigger Happy Active allows you to one-shot heavies. However, it does struggle a bit on dozers, so whip out the GSPS whenever needed for overkill aced. But that's more uncommon than the actual use of the GSPS here, which is killing shields. You could use the Judge, it would be identical but with more ammo and concealment. But come on, I've used enough of this gun, and I know you have too. Maybe not suit crook levels of new, but experiment around with the weapons of this game. It's a shame that you only see so few weapons in public lobbies. And those are your 5 Crook builds. Like I said earlier, Crook doesn't really offer much, especially in practical terms. There's no good reason to use Crook setups outside of the very expensive HPV setup, which has limitations of its own. The deck is just too restrictive to be practical, and it's too weak to warrant those restrictions. Let's just go over how I would improve the deck for it to see more use. Frankly, the deck doesn't have enough armor or dodge to make it worth playing. As I mentioned before, the LBV is outdone by Rogue, the HPV is expensive, and the VV has no purpose. I'd like the HBV to get two-shot armor using just Iron Man. There are two ways to do this. The first being to increase the armor percent. Right now, using Iron Man with Cork results in a 95% armor bonus. 
To make diehard aced HPV get two shot would require Crook to give a boost of at least 220%. Yeah, that's a terribly ugly number. Anyway, solution number two. Replace the armor regen boost with a straight armor increase. Now, without changing anything else in the deck, we need a minimum bonus of 26 armor. That's kind of an ugly number, so round it to 30 and call it there. This makes HPV Crook similar to a cheaper ICTV armor. However, the dodge that it has is nothing compared to the power of 2 second god mode, so it'll make the deck strong, but nothing that overpowers other decks. Ballistic Vest with Iron Man and Die Hard now has 214.5 armor, which allows you to go for a varied two-shot setup. Both the Frenzy and Quick Fix Path work, which allows the armor to be used differently to HPV, and differently based on what you want. LBV with Die Hard and Iron Man now has 195 armor, and with Frenzy Aced, or both 10% resists, it also gets two-shot armor. This is how you make a deck that both dodges and tanks, and to be honest, I'd lower the dodge by 5 at this point. HPV can get a cheap 2-shot armor with 20 dodge, BV can get medium price 2-shot armor with 25 dodge, and LBV can get an expensive 2-shot armor with 30 dodge. Factor in the concealment bonuses of all the armor, and you can see how a practical armor progression is made that doesn't necessarily overrule anything else. Now we have a deck that can tank and dodge, and all of its armors have a purpose. You could go for more of the dodge element, but that causes problems on the lower end. Buffing dodge by 10, for example, makes HVV an expensive tanking setup with 35 dodge, which is nice. It makes Ballistic Vest still useless with 40, but the issue is the LBV, which now has 45 dodge. Now it comes with 2-shot light protection while having more dodge than Rogue, which causes an out balance there. Anyway, give Crook a try, but don't expect a whole lot out of it. It's an alright deck, but it's just too restrictive. I'll be leaving a poll for the next deck up tomorrow, so make sure to vote for your pick.